So um, Kalamo is Kalamir, um, Guanya is Guanya, uh, John K is John K. Um, yeah, their names should sound similar. If you just sounded out, it should be relatively similar to some of the characters that you know. Um, Huang Zhang here is uh, Sir Henry the Strong in the West. You guys didn't see him, but he was one of the leaders of the army that was traveling with them. Um, also in the journal tab, they should be sorted or organized with both of their portraits under their name. So that should make it a bit easier. Does Sun Swaybo have any suggestions for the blood? Um, if he doesn't immediately, he's not so well versed in such matters, but he can certainly um, keep it in mind and talk and speak with it to his advisors about uh, possible uses. And I do agree that uh, my friends get a little antsy just sitting around waiting for things to happen. So if you do have some tasks, maybe we can hear you out. Hmm. Well, since you asked, the as you know, I was originally sent to the city um, on behalf of Yuanshu to defeat the Golden Scars. We did so, and we sent them fleeing, but I believe that their leadership has survived. To prevent any unforeseen um, consequences, I believe it would be pertinent to track down their leadership and eliminate them. Well, I don't suppose that you and your heroes would be up to the task? We could look into it at, at a minimum. If you do, I would appreciate it. Everyone's getting a little weirded out with Sung Sabo and I just staring at each other for a prolonged period of time. <laughs> yeah, although this probably happens like every once in a while. Anybody who's been a long-term advisor has probably seen this and knows what's up. Mind you, has just been inviting every sword he can see into the collective. All right. Um, Even Sun Suebo's want to talk to his dead brother. All right. Well, you might be able to talk to Sensuebo's um, sword. It would probably accept the connection. But we can get into that in a bit. So um, what do you guys want to do then from here as a group? Uh, I mean, I'm fine with doing some reconnaissance to try and figure out who these leaders are and how we murder them. Yeah, better passing sounds good. All right. So, sorry, who are we looking for? So um, you were told just now by Sun Suebo that um, he defeated the leadership of the Golden Scars, or he defeated the Golden Scars in the city, and um, they fled but he believes that their leadership survived. He was hoping that you could maybe help to track them down and uh, eliminate them for them to, to wrap up the loose ends. Jenna Jue is um, alive. Yeah, so um, in this case, it is Zhang Bao is the leader he was referring to. If I don't believe you've met. I suppose as a courtesy, I would go introduce myself to the other leaders. But I'm not looking to get too involved with the rest. I'll leave that okay. to the main you. From a political standpoint, 
Um, who's in charge here? So the Sonsuevo is nominally in charge of this rebellion. And so he's sort of nominally in command of the forces. But um, after maybe a, asking around a little bit, which you could even do outside, honestly, um, you would probably know that uh, uh, he actually has the least, uh, the smallest size force um, in total of the different groups that have come. Um, Colomo has the next largest. Um, so Sonsuevo has a force of a, like, I think it's less than 10,000 men at this point. Um, Colomo brought a few tens of thousands, maybe 30, 40,000. Um, but uh, Zhao Zhao uh, or Zhao Zhao brought um, a good 60, 70,000 men um, and a fleet of warships that are in the harbor or on the river. It sounds like we have more soldiers than they would have people in the province. Yeah, so, I mean, this is kind of a problem, right? Because there's some pretty large armies that have collected here and uh, their logistics is an issue for sure. That's probably going to be a matter of discussion in the War Council. Um, is it, so Zhao Zhao, is he the one that's the regent for the Little Empress? He's yeah, the so, prime minister. Yeah, that's right. So you guys would see him here um, in his Eastern form. And um, your understanding is that he is the prime minister of the North Northern Kingdom. Um, he represents the interests of the Empress. Um, so at, at, at kind of a high level, what unifies these three groups is that all three of the groups represented here recognize the Empress as the one true Empress over all the lands. Um, she's young, she's only like, you know, 18 something years old. So not exactly um, really coming to her own yet, but um, nevertheless, she is in the line of succession um, and the one recognized by most groups. So they're unified in their support of the Empress and their opposition to Yuan Shu. Um, the, so Zhao Zhao is the prime minister, Kalamo is a king of the Western Kingdom, and Sonsuevo is claiming the title of Shogun here, which um, belonged to his father and which has not gone claimed in the intervening period of time. But essentially it would make him like the, the top general under the Empress would be the, the formal recognition of that. So not supplanting the Empress or not claiming to be a king himself, but um, the leader of the Eastern Kingdom nonetheless. Do we have any intel on the opposing army? So you know that the opposing army is over 200,000 um, at least. So they vastly outnumber yours. Um, the only intel that you really have is that uh, Yuan Shu has um, far more resources and um, is like many more men. Their morale is not great, but um, he has attracted many sort of opportunistic and ambitious people to his cause. And um, with uh, their large war chest and their vast armies, they hope to simply overwhelm and um, defeat this coalition in one fell swoop, more or less. You know that their top general is a man that goes by the name of Li Bu, reputed to be the, the strongest fighting man alive. He is the one that is wielding an arm of Ansarim possibly multiple it's possible yeah is he somebody that we were specifically targeting or just happenstance well he happens to be leading this army here so you you guys would have your personal quest of trying to collect the arms of answering so it would be great if you could get his obviously but then there's you know for aiding son suevo and all this he's going to be happy to kind of lend his arm of answering to your cause as you guys continue. Um, like if you do manage to collect enough and uh, the time is right. Yeah, I was already assuming that uh, Suebo was going to give us his. I we I think we had counted and we had six or seven, and so this one would be an eighth one. If, yeah, he might have more. Yeah, though, so. I think we should though not attempt the we should try to get at least nine before we attempt getting the um the ritual or whatever no that's fine i wasn't suggesting that we should grab it and give up i just was trying to keep track of where we are in our overall quest 
Plus, he has the one, probably, that Mine you wants. And I want it so bad. Speaking right. of the one that Mine you wants, how many of these people know that the Emperor is actually still alive? So many of them know he's alive, or he was alive, but they know that he was disgraced and shamed to such an extent that all of his titles and power were stripped from him. And so, as far as they're concerned, he might as well be dead. Is the Empress his daughter? She is. Interesting. Okay. Is it going to be a problem that Mainu is openly wearing his ring? I mean, there may be individuals here that would recognize that. Um, Zhao Zhao was a member of his court for many years. He would probably recognize it. Hmm. Why do you have his ring? Because I chopped his arm off. You didn't give his ring back? Oh, fucking, he ain't getting his ring back. He's a dickhead. <laughs> Caused the apocalypse. Sure. Oh, I guess it was Jin who was really excited about keeping him alive. Yeah, I mean, in my original campaign, I just killed him. <laughs> so, wasn't my fault, though. I took the cursed dagger and it made me kill him. But, yeah. I don't think my new, my new is just like, sort of like a wedding ring at this point. He just keeps it on at all times. So if anyone is going to spot it, because my knee's going to go over and talk this house out. Oh. All right. Unless so, Drannik immediately says, let's go kill these guys. No. Well, I said, I would Is what Drannik want to kill? As a courtesy type style. But I'm not looking to curry favor with any of these men quite yet. Well, since as far as I know, I'm just some backwoods guy claiming, and some Swaybo's being duped. Since Aradavar isn't here, Manu will go as his announcer and be noticeably worse at it. All right. So you'll uh, announce his. Um, that the the king is retiring from court? Probably once he's noticed that Tyrannic has walked off. He wasn't really paying attention that much. <laughs> just try to follow. All right. Which way is Tyrannic walking? What do you mean? I mean, I thought you were walking away uh, uh, from... Uh... Yeah, I guess... Uh... I mean, I guess what I'm saying is if you could move our token so we know where we're going. We'll start with the blue people. <laughs> All right. I mean, you may as well go in front and, like, knock on the doors and open them. Sure. And be like, it's the king. Oh, wait. Oh, you haven't opened yet. Sorry. They'll open the door and invite you inside. Welcome, one and all, to King Drannik's court. Yay! No <laughs> There'll be some murmurs through the room as um they... Kind of usher you inside and say a thousand eyes roll up. Hmm. Do these seem like discontent murmurs? Um, somewhat. They some of them are kind of looking at this quote unquote King Dranic, um, perhaps as he passes or the rest of you. But um the uh you'll probably see um sorry, it was to do something uh, I've never done before. Yeah. So uh, Gia will step forward and she says, Ah, I heard that you helped to um, save the, the village of Dunwich. Did we do that? Was that, that the one with the pumpkin? Where? 
Is that the one um, with the short people who are sacrificing people? Right, yeah, Gully Witch. Pumpkin? Gully Witch, not Downwich. Yeah, Gully Witch. Yes, that was the yeah. uh, the Halfling Village. Yeah, mine you was asking that in character. Sure, she'll say, um, yes, it was uh, a lovely place, made ever more lovely by um, your your help. You we are very was... grateful for your service. Wait, you thought it was lovely before when they were still sacrificing people to an evil pumpkin? She says, perhaps it was only the idea, the impression. They offered a false face to us, an illusion of what the town really was. But now it, we can enjoy it in its true beauty. Do they still have a lot of pumpkins? It's like you were eating those evil pumpkins' children. So that's not too good. Might want to get checked out by a doctor or something. This is technically, I am a doctor. Oh my god, you're gonna need a better doctor. Who doctors a doctor? I don't know. And he's <laughs> gonna start trying, start to panic a little bit. Hmm. She says, "Uh, you are a strange little man." Uh, only sixteen. Uh, do, oh wait, this is one of those politically situations, isn't it? Um, give me one sec, and I'm going to pageant in the peacock the way it's literally intended to be used, and like completely change my demeanor. <laughs> and can I try a knowledge nobility to figure out how to Sorry, fix and knowledge? Sorry, knowledge, nobility. Well, so Sorry, am I cutting out? To fix what? You are cutting out a bit, but to fix what? Sorry? How horribly mine you has mangled this interruption. Uh, this I interruption. mean, it wouldn't be knowledge, nobility to smooth over diplomacy. It would be a diplomacy check. Well, I sort of want to do knowledge, nobility so we can... Because he wouldn't even know how to do it, but... Sure, sure. Maybe knowledge, nobility. I don't really want a bonus. I just want him to figure out... Like, okay, this is how you're supposed to do it. Okay, well, you can roll for RP purposes, that's fine. Yeah, that's basically all I want. So that's a 42, and then a diplomacy to smooth it out, so 28. All right. And he, it's like a different person is actually talking now. Sure. Well, G will um, sort of say, like, I presume you're here to speak to um, the prime minister. Oh, yes. King Dranik is here to speak to the Prime <laughs> Minister. Let us bow. He bows to the Prime Minister and, or does whatever is appropriate culturally. All right. Well, the door is not open yet, but you uh, can make your way over there. And as you do, um, Dion Wei will sort of speak up. This is the large man in full armor here who appears to be wielding... Um, two halberds, one in each hand. And uh, he sort of has one crossed over the door, which he pulls away as you approach. And he just sort of whispers as you pass, don't try anything. Of course, our ultimate defiance goes to the mouth of the emperor. We would never try anything. Hmm. You can hear him squinting at you through his mask. <laughs> Just like, imagine the face of a 40-year-old butler on a 16-year-old child. All right. So, um, Dranik comes face-to-face -face with the Prime Minister of Zao Zao, a relatively infamous individual in the Empire. Vesper, Abishu, and Mengi will see him as well. Here he appears to be just uh, kind of writing, um, perhaps composing a poem. Um, and he'll stop and stop a bit and I'll say, ah, welcome. My name is Zhao Zhao. I take it that you are men and women of talent. I could use people such as you. This is King Dranik of the na -na 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 forest, but pretend I said the right name. <laughs> he would have said the right name, I just don't remember it. 
presenting himself to Prime Minister Zhao Zhao. Hmm. Yes, uh, excuse my informality. My King Drenik, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. He'll give a, a small bow here. He says, um, as he sort of concludes the introduction, he'll sit back down, um, like motion for both of you to sit down as well, and he'll sort of speak. He'll say, uh, your title, King, was that an official title appointed by the Empress? Want to handle this oven? Or should I? Oh, uh, go ahead, Manu. Yes, we are. King Dranik is, in fact, the official king of this area. He has been appointed by the emperors. <laughs> Without the menacing chuckle, I'm going too deep in the serial killer voice. Shouldn't that require a great deal of uh, bluff? Uh, no, that's actually true. So, well, the bluff here is that Zhao Zhao's referring to the current empress, the young empress, Xia Lia, but you are referring to the ancient empress, Empress Gwena Isn't that so, right? Yep, yep. Uh, I'm referring to the papers that we got that said basically, here, whoever gets us, be a king. Yep, okay. So if you want a bluff check, I can make it, because it is sort of deceiving, but... Yeah, sure. You can make a bluff check. Um, I'm. I let me check. I guess it doesn't really matter, but that might get a plus four because obviously menu is. Um. Yes, I I would be getting a plus four to that, so that would be a thirty-three. All right. So Dazo is kind of raises an eyebrow and studies you both. He says, uh, he starts laughing out loud and visibly, and then he sort of calms down. And he says, no, wait, you're serious. But it was Empress Shia who granted your legitimacy. Uh, there have been other empresses. The one we refer to is the original Guenavalea. Ah, the founder of the modern legal code. And the crux upon which our fates now rest. Hmm. Interesting. I don't suppose that uh, you can provide proof I think we have the documents, right? Do you guys carry them with you, or do you keep them back at the... Uh... I created a copy of the documents when we first got them. Okay. There are some slight errors I purposely put in them, but... Oh, God. Are you trying to forgery this guy? No. Oh. Yes, I mean, if you're purposely putting in errors. So, I mean, that would be... Someone grabbed them. Yeah, so that would be an, an opposed linguistics check, right? Um, but if you want to present it now, or you could just say you don't have it, and... I mean, um, I thought so... we were carrying the original... No, I was just to say, I don't carry such important documents, but I carry a copy of them. Hmm. I would hate I see. for them to fall into the wrong hands. I'm sure you would understand. I do, I do. And please, excuse me, I meant no offense. I just have never heard of Empress Guinevalea making an exception for the region of Nantagu. That is very interesting. It was a bit of an interesting story, so I agree it was. Hmm. Perhaps you could tell me the story sometime, but we have urgent matters before us, a war to fight, and it will be an uphill battle. 
Do you think you are up to the task? Did we just lie about having the Empress's permission to take over that kingdom? Uh, no, we do have the Empress's permission. How did we get the permission? We just got the current Empress. So we, when when the campaign started, we got documents that said, "Okay, if you're here, you can basically take over ownership by Guinevere." Oh, okay. Yeah, it it was supposed to be part of the in-game rationale for why you guys could found a kingdom in Antagri. That Empress Guinevere had explicitly called out that region as being independent from the rest of the empire which is also the reason that Nantagu is not affected by these dimensional changing shenanigans that you see elsewhere. Although it has its own special type, as you saw underground. Good sir, we have participated in the slaying of a being that considered itself a deity. The kingdom is within our capabilities. Hmm. Has not Sunsueva defeated the Golden Scars? Did they not lay claim from the Prima herself? No, we speak of a single being, a beholder of monstrous strength, defeated hmm. by us. Then Perhaps it sounds as though you... A Vulgana. Da, da, da. Hmm. So he won't interrupt you. He'll listen to you. So the voice, he says, um, I'm not sure that I have heard of this, Volgana. Oh, you mean one of the leaders of the cults of the Carved Eye? Mm, yes, yes. We, we had some problems with them in the north. They were uh, quickly dealt with. Yes, by us. God, I hate this guy. Hmm. She was an ally of the Twisted King, you see, the one that we slayed on your behalf. Hmm. Ah, well, that is a great service then that you have rendered to the North. And it sounds as though you are capable of fighters and heroes. And I hope that with your added strength, we can defeat Yuan Shu and find a way to um, established peace and order in our time. Was he pretending that he was responsible for the Twisted King being killed? Yes. That's exactly what so. he just he was, did. He was talking about the cultists of the Car of Die. That might have been a separate instance. I mean, you have no idea how many cults there were. You know of two cults. You guys defeated those two. I mean, you've heard rumors there are others, but you don't know. Yeah, I, I doubt he's trying to claim lay claim when somebody has already come up and said, hey, thanks for doing that, like 10 minutes ago. That would be sort of dumb. They they know we did this. It would be weird for him to just be like, yeah, we did this. Hmm. Um, in any case, he's not going to necessarily like thank you personally himself either. Um, or rec like give recognition to the deed, but he will kind of speak in generalities about your your you know skill and your you know, prowess, and you know try to encourage you kind of like work you up. So he's like, of course, it'd be great to have you on our team. Let's go fight the other team. Um, I, I telepathy to Dranek. Do you want to? Do you want me to push him at all? Like try and get any benefits? No, best not to push our luck too far in the beginning. We should see how things kind of shake out first. All right, then my new will just accept these empty platitudes. Does he say anything about the ring, though? That's what I want to know. Mm, that's a good point. And he makes no attempt to hide it because he's forgotten he wears it. Um, he doesn't immediately say anything about the ring. Um, whether or not he noticed it, you're not totally sure either. But uh, in this case, um, he will sort of ask about, um, you know, maybe a little bit more about your relationship to Sansuevo or 
um, your, you know, your plans or how you're offering to support the effort. Um, he's particularly, it sounds like he's, he's mostly interested in figuring out what your interest is in here, like what you're hoping to gain. Fame, glory, you know, a, a cut of the pie, he just wants to know. Um, can I try diplomacy just to keep him guessing? Sure. I mean, yeah. I don't want to give any, away any tells. I don't know why. I just feel like screwing with him. I'd just be like, oh, that's great. That's all. Oh, you know, maybe we wouldn't be. Oh, you know, just. And at some points, like, depending on how long this conversation takes, I knew it was just going to go back to being childish for like three seconds and then go back to the head of the peacock. All right. <laughs> okay. So um, while Menu and Delta are having that conversation, do Drenic, Abshu, or Vesper have anything to say here? Nope. Like I said, I was just going around introducing myself. So it's not okay. like our party's a surprise to these others. Right. Or the fact that one of us is now a king. Mm -hmm. I figure that's protocol. Announce yourself. Not just show up at the meeting. Yep. That is protocol, and that is proper. And you will probably notice when you are leaving here that uh, a lot of the snickering has gone away by this point, as uh, there may be still some murmuring going on, but um, not quite as bad. How about Vesper? Was there anything from her? Um, I guess I'll try to get some more information about the golden scarves. Okay. See what people know. So you could roll a diplomacy check to gather information. And by the way, Eridaver could roll a diplomacy check as well, since we never did that. I did. It's a 24 back there on the list. Ah, uh, sorry. I don't have a diplomacy uh, macro set up. Okay. So, all right. So the two of you are sort of asking around. So. Airdaver talking to the, the common folk here would learn that um, their food situation wasn't so bad before um, Sonsuevo moved in with the army. Um, he has prioritized feeding the army and, um, you know, it was bad, but not like dire before um, under the golden scars. And it sounds like the, most of the populace here actually preferred the golden scars, but uh, Circumstances being what they are, they knew that wouldn't last. And uh, well, now they're desperate for food again. So many of the people are leaving the city, trying to find greener pastures, um, going back to the rural areas and the farms. And to his credit, Sensevo has, you know, ordered that his men not engage in any form of pillaging or other like acts of um, stealing from the farmers or the people of the land. So they feel relatively safe to go and do this. But they do know that uh, the city is not really a good place to be right now. Um, as far as the the only other bits they can tell you, they would tell you that for some reason, um, when the Golden Scarves came here, they were looking for a young boy named Hu. That's H-U. They were asking multiple people around the streets for this boy. This boy was some um, orphan, some just like, homeless beggar child. They have no idea why the Golden Scars were so interested in. Okay. Um, what was the significance of the Golden Scars? What did they like about them better? So the Golden Scars believe they were on a mission from the Prima to establish heaven's will in the kingdom and that the old Emperor Uthelinglia had lost the mandate of heaven and so had his line of succession. And that in time, a new emperor would emerge that would visibly have the will of heaven and establish that celestial order on the people once again. So, in general, the Golden Scars were rebels that, you know, basically refused to recognize the legitimacy of the emperor and they actually rebelled long before the shattering and were defeated like in mass only about five years ago. So they had been everywhere, 
but they're mostly now just concentrated here in the east. And uh, this was their last major city. It was destroyed or like taken over by um, the uh, Sansuero. So they they have no other like bases to return to as far as you know, no other like places they can find solace or refuge. So they're not a lot allied with the false king or false emperor, whatever he is? No, they actually see him as being just as bad or worse than the Leo line. So, so you're saying they've been waiting for me. <laughs> I knew well, I, that's why I didn't agree to wipe them out. Hmm. I was like, oh, they could be useful. And that's because they were waiting for me to show up. Right. So, I mean, there are, there are religious zealots in a land with where people are not typically so religious, or at least not under the worship of the prima. So they kind of stand out here. But like, yeah, essentially, they're, they believe that in time, the one true emperor or empress will reveal themselves by the will of heaven, essentially, like following the one law, as um, you guys have understand, understood from like the Temple of the Shattered Mirror and elsewhere, whoever wins this great conflict in their mind has the divine right to rule. Why is the Prima not significant here? So remember when um, Empress Guinevere was choosing the three paths, um, she could either return to the north, she could go west as advised by her sort of a high priest, um, will return north as advised by kind of her like a master inventor, go west for her, her high priest or go east um, by the will of her beloved consort. If she did go east, then she was warned by the high priest that she would be forsaking the path of the prima and so would her descendants. So essentially the nobility that headed to the east under Empress Guinevere forsook the worship of the prima and were cursed. Um, that sword brother or sword, sword sister blade brother curse that um you guys are aware of is believed to be some of the fallout from that um vesper is trying to gather this information from here in the building they she would learn in addition to what um had been like she didn't get all the details that um arid Amar got but she would know that um it, it sounds like the Golden Scars had come to Jianling um, searching for their enemies, the uh, Phrenic Sages, and that uh, they were requesting the help of the local board when uh, evidently a fight broke out here in the fortress and they slew him. And just like that, they accidentally came to occupy the city of Jianling and they had never intended to really take the city or try to get involved in the politics of the region, but uh, they nevertheless were forced to after that. Until he killed somebody? Yeah, the former like lord of the city. <clears throat> How do you accidentally conquer a city? I mean, you kill the guy who's in charge and then you're like, what happens if we leave? Oh, everyone's getting there to starve. So I guess we're in charge now. Be a good question to ask them if you want to ask them. But um, <clears throat> you guys gather that the reputation of the Golden Scarves is pretty firmly in the chaotic good category. Um, so Abishu is kind of scanning for reactions. Abishu would be aware that um, it looks like all that snickering or the murmuring from before <clears throat> was because they they believe that King Drenik was just like every other self-proclaimed king who has no real legitimacy and would essentially be treated just like the Emperor Yuan Shu here, the false emperor. Uh, they were thinking of him like a false king. But now that he's actually made a pretty strong claim that he has legitimacy given by Empress Guinevere herself, that uh, changes things a bit, and that sort of explains their different reaction now when, as you guys are leaving. <clears throat> so right before we leave. I like them underestimating me. Yeah, I'm <laughs> uh, 
Um, right before we leave, my mu's gonna drop his patch into the peacock and say, and just give a big wave and be like, bye, see you guys when we have the meeting. It was nice to talk to you all. Hmm. It's good talking to you as well. Cao Cao will smile at you and wave as you leave. Of course, waving with the arm that has the ring. All right. I want him to call me out for it so I can tell him how shitty his emperor is. Well, he's not calling you out for it. Good idea, because that would destroy you in a verbal boxing match. Okay. So then, now what? Maybe Do we the who the boy is the boy that they think is going to be the new emperor or whatever. I don't know if we know about Did we reconvene with her ever? Yeah, so Vesper wouldn't know about the who oh, boy Oh, never mind. Yet. That was the one piece she I have no get. theories. Yeah. Unless Mamie wants to, I say we can skip the role playing of meeting all the other leaders and just say I introduced myself and moved on. I mean, we did meet all the other leaders. That was like I was the only one we haven't met. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of no, nobles no. and scholars and stuff here, but yeah, you've met all the leaders now, the main leaders. Okay. I thought the green frac faction down here was a different one. Those are the That's Western guys. Columnier, yeah. Yeah. They know us. Yeah, I mean, if we want to go on to the suns, would I get anything important out of the conversation with any of the swords? Um, not necessarily. Um, you notice that this is only really working with those that uh, were actually born in the region. So this should be only like the members of the red faction here, the Eastern um, factions are the ones that have um, actual souls in their blades. The other ones have blades or, you know, are otherwise styled in an Eastern way as though they had been born to the East, but uh, they do not. There's, it appears that this uh, change, the visual change of people is not powerful enough to literally imbue souls into their weapons. Wait, wait, wait. What? They didn't actually kill their brother because they didn't actually have a brother, therefore it's just an illusion. I mean, it's what? not exactly an illusion, but it is like um, like they're in a different reality. Um, and when they cross over realities, they still have a dominant reality, the one that they like were originally from. So like the ones that were originally from the North, though they appear like they would appear if they were from the East. They, it's not uh, following that they literally have souls in their blades. Do they still talk to their blades? No. Do they think they have souls in their blades? No. Like, they're aware that they're from the north here. but uh, so, so these guys know... They just don't know that they look eastern to everyone. Yeah, so from their vantage point, like, if you are looking at uh, Gia here, right? She has a katana on her back, right? So Gia, if you ask her about her background, she'd say, well, I was born on the, like in the Northern frontier on the edges of the empire. I recognize that the capital is here in the East and that the North is relatively undeveloped. As a result, she is not considered like high nobility in the definition of the East. So she doesn't have a sword sister, right? Um, but if you were to then talk to her northern version, she would say, well, I was born in the north, the capital is in the north, and that is the center of all civilization and power in the empire. Right? So in both versions, she's born in the north. It's just that in one version, that's the frontier or the edge of the empire, and in the other, it's the center. So that seems like it could cause a shit ton of confusion. Is there, like... I know we got to do this, but like, understanding the shattering is something. Is this like, 
if mind you brought together two minor people and had them like talk out things that they think should be different and like figure everything out would he have would i break reality or something would it just i mean it's it's confusing to everyone but it's not so confusing if you're actually in the right dimension at the right time like all of the people gathered here are in their eastern forms so they all of their memories match up pretty well right they all remember what the shattering felt like for people from the east and you know their respective like, but somebody who should have a sword brother would not would not have been affected by the curse because even if, if well, the capital was in the east wouldn't the whole nation still have the sword brother issue Is all the, the nobility that would have been in the center of civilization in the east right so think of it this way if you are a noble you are almost certainly born in the east and only the nobility are affected by the curse so if you were happen to be born in the west or the north most likely you are not nobility and most likely you are not affected by the curse so so do they not think of king kalamu as a noble they don't he was a bastard of the emperor he has no formal claim to the throne of the empire what about like so what do they think of the empress then why are they following the empress if they think the empress is from the east well that's the thing like in their from the perspective of everyone here there's only one empress now the one that is currently living in the north everyone in their eastern forms here believes was born in the east and is from the east so right? do they not question that she doesn't have a twin well they believe that she does have a twin just like all of the empresses would but she's not here so you, you don't have a chance to inspect her to see if her sword has a soul or not or anything so so Zhao Zhao currently thinks the Empress he serves has a twin. Or had a twin. I mean, she's 18 already. She would have presumably ended her twin's life. I mean, there was actually a succession crisis all about this. It, it's a complex thing. But um, Mine is just going to go around screw, like trying to figure the, this out while you guys are doing this. Like, sure. He, he wants to figure sure. it out. Sure, it's a mind bender. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get too distracted with that, but it sounds like you guys want to try to move to some action. So do you want to do that then? Sorry, do what? Maybe move to some action, like pursuing the Golden Scars or one of these optional side quests before the big meeting, or do you just want to jump into the big meeting? Yeah, side quests would be fun. Yeah, I'm fine with either. Why don't we put it to a vote in the Discord? How long will it take me to do my gathering of food and distribution? Um, well, like you said, you, we're going to spend this pretty much all day gathering the stuff, and you would need to rest to get those spells in memory. So, you know, it might be like, you know, eight, 12 hours or more. They've Everybody has just arrived here, basically. You know, they were going to have their meeting tonight to discuss so you probably would miss the meeting if you do spend all day gathering and you're just redistributing food and so far yeah then that's what i do all right all right so i put the question in the discord i see one for quest and any other votes going once Going twice. Looks like side quest. Yeah, I'm, I'm just neutral. I'm fine with either. All right. Okay, then let's do it. Uh, can we assume that we met up with Aradavar and got the information he has? Yes. Although I will mention that um, the uh, so there's the setup I have here is that there's a side quest you could do for each of the factions. You guys, it sounds like you explicitly didn't ask the uh, Zhao Zhao for is to try to ramp up with his, but Colomir would have. I don't want to do his side quests. That's fine. Um, Colomir, however, would mention to you guys that um, he has placed an order for food um, to be shipped from his kingdom here to help the common people and their common cause. Um, he would, since it has to pass through an Antago forest, he was hoping that um, you all might be able to ensure it's safe delivery. I mean, how big of a bag of holding do you have? 
uh, as I had never been less the one to trust magic in such matters, but uh, if you believe that would be safer. I mean, I, I could just zip over and come back, you know? Help yeah, I was going to say, isn't this going to be months of traveling to walk food all the way? Well, they were going to use their fastest horses. Okay, it still sounds like weeks of traveling. Yeah, it would be weeks. Yeah, I mean... We're my... going to miss the meeting if we do this? Well, he, I mean, he just sent the order out, so you could pre presumably, like, go to the meeting and then do that if you want. But he's just throwing that out there as another thing you could do at some point. Could you switch to the world map real quick? Sure. I just want to measure the distance to see how feasible this would be for mine to do. Because he doesn't like seeing people suffering either. 